Hey everybody, welcome to Game Goose. Today is April 14th. This is Season 2, Episode 35. My name is Dan Curry. I hope everyone's having a great day. Uh, we, I am joined in the neighborhood by Clinton Brower. How are you, Clinton? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Good, good. You safe at home? Cozy? Mm-hmm. Good, good to hear. And in New York City, Neil Brower. How are you over there, Neil? Oh, I'm doing fine. Um, just eating some soup, which I think I've decided is the uh, the most sonically unpleasant food for podcast medium. Let me demonstrate. No. Nope. Oh God. Nope. nope. We're I gonna lose. End this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna lose followers. And I think this is the first time one of us has ever been eating in a two-year run. Probably. Yeah. Probably. So, so why are you doing it? <laughs> yeah, I don't understand. You had all the time in the world, right, to eat because... earlier. Because right. my body works different in the quarantine, man. You need it, and you need it now. I wake up next to my fridge, and I work next to my fridge. I'm like, I could eat lunch at 10:45, and then I forget, and here I am with soup. <laughs> well, Neil Brower over there with his soup, everyone. Um, what have you guys been playing? You've been playing some games, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Clinton. Let's start with you, since you're not eating soup. <laughs> It's not even good soup. Why don't you why don't you just mute yourself? Finish you your soup. You can't hear me. I'm being so quiet. Finish your Keep soup going. and then <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna watch you. I'm just gonna watch you until you finish. Alright, I'm putting it down. <laughs> <laughs> uh I've been playing uh League of Legends, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh I popped open some crayon physics. Deluxe or something. I don't know what exactly it's called. Like uh, Crayola? Yeah, but it's like just a it's a really old puzzle game from like 2008 that was on phones or something probably. Uh, I probably got it in Humble Bundle or something somewhere along the way, but I was looking around with that. Uh, I played a bit of... Uh, <clears throat> what is it called? I'm trying to look at my thing here. Uh, Dead by Daylight. Oh, nice, nice. Oh, yeah. Uh, you played I, a little bit of that last week. Any any new updates? I can't play it. It it gave me nightmares. <laughs> really? I get so fucking, I don't know, amped up and antsy while playing it. My anxiety goes through the roof, and you, it was awful. Do you mind horror movies? No, I hate horror movies. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I played The Hunter, Call of the Wild with my brother for a few hours over the weekend. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> Nice, nice. They're actually offering. I thought about jumping back into that because they're offering some uh, Microsoft points as a Game Pass reward if you play oh, nice. something in that game. Yeah. I uh, played a bunch of Governor of Poker, uh, which is just a really shitty poker game. Uh, How got can into. A poker be shitty? Well, it's just like full of pop up ads and. Uh, okay. Like, spend money so you can get chips and. It's like a free to play like thing. Uh, I play started playing Counter Strike uh, Global Offensive. Oh jeez, some CS:GO. Damn, yeah, right. Uh, which was okay. Not, I don't know. Not a huge fan of like the kind of hip fire aspect of it. It just felt super different to me, which I guess is kind of the point of it. But like, I'm not used to it, so it didn't. Uh, didn't hit me the way I guess it does other people. Uh, I played some Jackbox. Uh, just kind of all of them all over the place for a few days. Uh, I bought Rocket League and have been playing a little bit of that. Uh, and mostly this week I've been playing Elite Dangerous again. So, oh, nice. And space nice. trucking. What's... Can you remind me what Elite Dangerous is again? Uh, it's a full-sized solar system, not solar system, uh, galaxy of the Milky Way space simulator. And you have spaceship and you fly around and you can mine, you can do combat, you can be a pirate, you can do trading, all that kind of jazz. Nice. Uh, speaking of space, she's asleep. She's taking a little nap, but, uh, Courtney started playing Outer Wilds. And she knows nothing about it. 
and she has not heard anything about it and she doesn't remember me playing it like at all and it is so hard to sit next to her and not say anything (laughs) because it took her way too long to find out that the sun was exploding (laughs) <laughs> spoiler alert for this game by the way so the sun exp- you're in a time loop every time you die you come back to life and the sun explodes every 22 minutes something like that and then you start the day over again and it plays like this really epic music and she didn't even like realize like when the music plays i'm about to die <laughs> so <laughs> she'd be how like many, how many Days, though. It many days though it had been a couple and i was just like come on figure it out and she's like reading something and then like the music's playing and then she's like head sets on her controller and she's like eating some chips and i'm like in my head i'm like fucking read the thing you need to know the thing you're gonna die <laughs> so she eventually figured out that the sun explodes she doesn't know the time interval she's like oh and the music plays when the sun's gonna explode and i was like yes thank you i was like yeah. <laughs> Because every time it happened, she was just like really deep into a planet. So, um, but yeah, it's so interesting to watch someone else play that. But um, as far as uh, on my end, I've been playing Hearthstone. Uh, again, really fun. Back into it. My wife had to put parental controls on my account so I can only play certain times during the day. So I don't like uh, do absolutely nothing. Um, really fun. Just the only update I want to say is I don't think last week when we talked about this, um they added a new uh game type called battlegrounds which is their auto chess and it is really fun i'm actually really enjoying that um they i know people are mad that the way they monetized it but i'm i'm probably not gonna buy that stuff so at the beginning of every game you get to choose between two heroes they have different abilities um and if you pay you can choose between four heroes and it's like but it's like 20 bucks it's kind of expensive so I think why people are so upset. Um, but you pick your hero. Every round has two um, two modes. If you've never played an auto chess game before, which I hadn't, you have the recruit phase, which is basically where you pick uh, minions you want on your turn. And then you have the battle phase, where your minions attack the other people's minions, kind of in like a random uh, situation. It goes from left to right, but they choose someone random. And then whoever is at the end uh, gets these points and attacks the other person. And you play against eight other people at once. Um, it's really fun. Uh, that's like kind of a basic explanation. Um, there's a lot more to it. You're trying to get the same kind of minions that they build off of each other. And there's a lot of strategy because every minion costs three gold. Um, but then to get new minions to buy, it's a gold. You can sell a minion for one gold. So that's kind of where the strategy comes up. You can upgrade the tavern so you can get more powerful minions and that costs gold. So it's all about how you spend your gold and how you order your minions. Um, it's really fun. It's completely free. It doesn't if you if you're someone in Hearthstone who's like ah, I don't want to play because I feel like everyone has better cards than me. This has nothing to do with what cards you have because it's completely random every time. Um, and in general, Hearthstone's gotten a lot better. They're throwing stuff at me right now. Um, so they're, they 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 everything's good. If you didn't like Hearthstone because you didn't like Hearthstone, then don't play Hearthstone again. But if you were like man, I really wish there was more stuff. I wish I didn't have to spend a bunch of money. Um, it's a lot different now. So and they're they're throwing a lot more stuff at people, so a lot of fun. Then you <laughs> didn't like the League of Legends auto chess, right? Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it. I just, I don't know. I don't. It takes too long for me to just lose. <laughs> it's kind of how <laughs> I feel like uh, how I feel about it. It's, how long were the, are there were those games? They can take a long time. They can take like 40 minutes to an hour or so. Yeah, that's about where our Hearthstone one is. Yeah. Um, there's eight players though, so like it's kind of like you're probably if you if you're playing for forty minutes to an hour, you're probably in the top and you'll earn some rewards. Um, otherwise, you're out pretty quick, you know. Um, but I'm actually decently good at it, which is kind of odd. But it might just be because my rating's really low right now. So, but it's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I uh, yeah, I don't know. T- TFT is. It's interesting. It's got a lot of cool mechanics in it, and once once you kind of figure those out, it's a lot more fun. But it just takes too long. I feel like I don't know. Do they have that? They have that on the phone now, right? Yeah, I think it just released on mobile. Because I think I've been getting a lot of ads for that. Maybe I'll try that one as well. Um, but other than that, I've been playing a little more Animal Crossing. Nothing new there. Well, the Bunny Day event is finally over. Thank God. Yes, yes. I think I'm gonna enjoy the game much more than now that it's done. Um. And they had a fishing tournament. That was fun. I enjoyed that. 
Um, kind I of thought that was incredibly underwhelming. Let me uh, be devil's advocate there. Um, they didn't set up an event. They didn't like fast travel you, tra- travel you around a pond with like obstacle obstacles or special fish or something. They just said, hey, go to all the places you normally fish, use all your normal methods, and catch as many fish as you can in five minutes. Yeah, it was so pretty pretty easy. much just who use as much bait as you can craft, and you'll get a high score. There yeah. is no event around it. It was just, hey, go f- focus on fishing for five minutes and don't get distracted. I thought that was pretty lame. I think, like, in the long run, I think it would have been... F- I thought it was fine. It was fine. It was nothing excite- super exciting. But I think what made it worse was the fact that Bunny Day was going on, and Bunny Day sucked so much, because I think we can get a really good balance of these big, long, great events mixed with this one, these one day little events you know like i wouldn't have i think if bunny day was great i'd have been like cool we had bunny day and then we had that little fishing thing which was fine but bunny day was great where it was like man bunny day is actually ruining the game for me then fishing thing is coming up which i really enjoy and i'm like okay it was fine you know what i mean yeah um but i like that there's like I, i wasn't expecting it it was fun to kind of look at the board and be like oh there's a fishing tournament happening on saturday so um it will be interesting to see how they do coming up. I'm pretty happy just in general that things are happening so quickly after release. Um, but I, I agree that they could be stepped up. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not mad at them for doing it, but I did, I did see, like, I knew about it a week in advance as soon as I completed his fishing challenge. He's like, mm-hmm. hey, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a competition in a week. I'm like, oh yeah, what's that? And I had a, I had a week to think about it. Like, okay, they're gonna do something. And they didn't. They didn't really do anything. But that's okay. I, I just don't think it was. They could have put in. They could have put a, a smidge more effort into it. Yeah, yeah, I can agree with that. Did you do the fishing tournament, Clinton? Nope. I haven't played that game since my birthday party. Really? Yeah. How You're come? off it. I just. I don't know. It was getting kind of boring. I haven't played it. It's every. But when, at the time that I'm awake, everything's closed. So it's like, what right. the fuck's the point of this? I can't oh, do yeah. anything. Clinton's yeah. nocturnal now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of on you for your sleep schedule choices. <laughs> no, I mean, the half the game shouldn't be closed off for half the day. I mean. But it's not half the day. It's open for, well, I guess it is half the day. 12 hours. But normal waking hours. You'll enjoy it more when you're on normal people time. <laughs> that shouldn't be a thing, though, you know? Like, there are people that work, like, during the day. True. And then. Night shift people yeah. fucking hate that. Yeah. Yeah. They probably don't like that game. Um. Yeah, I guess I guess I get it, but it is a real time game, and they're keeping real time times. So, real time yeah. times. It's just their choice that they do. Oh my gosh! Can you guys hear my dog being a jerk? Arroo. Really? Uh, I played. Uh, oh Jesus! We heard that one. Yeah. The strangle. Hang on. Did you I'll talk about strangle him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So this week, uh, I got back into Dark Souls. Uh, well, I think I talked about that a little last week, but I went further in Dark Souls 2, um, which I found out is is one of the fans... It's the least favorite of the series, and I don't know why yet. I'm trying not to spoil anything by reading too much, um, but I haven't really felt it. Uh, enjoying it a lot. It's just as hard as the first. Uh, yeah. What else? Gosh, I jumped into some Apex. That's still the same. Modern Warfare, uh, Warzone. That is still the same. Well, it's slight difficulty or slight changes. Nothing worth talking about. Animal Crossing, same. I am playing Hearthstone. Uh, I've always wanted to get into it. I do really like card games, but there's something so overwhelming about having nine different heroes, each with really deep Ten card now. pools. 10 uh really deep card pools and also like uh you know but wild or cards that work for every class and blah 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 there's so much research that needs to be done into it um but i'm also just trying to have fun with it take a little slow play one here at a time and see if i can get into it without spending money um yeah yeah, but we'll see uh i played dan three times today he let me play some of his decks and i still lost three times in a row um and i'm pretty good at I'm pretty good at card games like Slay the Spire. I do really well with. 
I understand how the mechanics work, but there's just something different in Hearthstone that my brain hasn't hasn't gotten yet. Uh, but other than that, no, uh, n- nothing, nothing new. You're missing a big one that we played together. Uh, Ark. Ark. Oh yeah, we got back into Ark. We've been really into Ark recently. Um, they've done a graphical overhaul since last time we played. It looks a lot better. Um, we're playing. You this... can just say graphic. A graphic overhaul? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, it's fun, and we're doing. We're having a lot of fun, and we're getting a lot of creatures together. It's weird. There was like a menu change. And the menu change, that was a while ago. I think last time we played they had this, but I don't think we got super into it. The menu change is good and bad, but you can tell it was definitely for PC. Yeah, it's all like radial, circular like menus that you can select from that's incredibly not satisfying on on a controller. Like You don't press A on anything. You just hold it in the direction you want it to be. And then yeah. you hope that you got the right thing, which oftentimes <laughs> you don't. You don't. Um, so there's that. And then just like there's a lot of like search, like there's so much stuff you can do. So there's like a search bar and everything's like categories. And it's like, man, if I had a mouse, I'd be flying through this thing right now. Uh, but on console, it's like, yeah, they didn't do any effort towards making it easier on console. But other than that, it's a lot of fun. Um, Neil and I just kind of come up with goals and and do those things. We got these horses that are great. Uh, we were laughing because there's all these dinosaurs in the world. There's even robot dinosaurs now. And we got really excited when we got some horses. <laughs> yep, things that still exist in modern day society. We have robo dinos, <laughs> we have flying dinos, but horses. Now, those. Um, but it is cool because they added a new way to tame stuff that you don't tame anything else that way. So with the horses like most dinosaurs if you've never played arc most car- uh, creatures there's two ways to tame them the main one is you knock them out either with tranquilizer darts or a club or something like that and then while they're knocked out you feed them berries um they have a like a knockout meter if that goes empty they'll wake up you have things that you can feed them to keep them asleep and then you give them berries and as you feed them berries they their taming meter goes up once it hits 100 it's yours so that's the main way um, that you get most of them. Another way is sometimes there's ones that just kind of walk around and you just walk up and feed them berries. And if you feed them enough, they'll be like, hey, this guy's cool. And they'll be your buddy. With horses, you have to feed them. Then you have to jump on them. And then they kind of just run around. It's kind of like Zelda in a way. Um, where in Breath of the Wild, how you ride the horses until you like calm them down and tame them. So you basically ride them around, and then they buck. And when they buck, you have to press the button to feed them again. And once you get them to a certain amount, then you uh, have the horses. So kind of a new way to tame something, which was pretty cool. And something I didn't expect the game to throw at us. Super fun game. Glad we're back Mm -hmm. into it. Uh, Yep, and Neil and I have a new long-term goal that's just a fun one. Neil has looked forward in the... um, the things you can craft, and there is an item that you can throw at a yeah. uh, at a creature, and you will capture it, and then you can throw it again, and it will unleash the creature. So, our new goal is to make two of those. Uh, each of us go out into the world, capture the, you know, get a time limit, capture the most powerful creature we can, build an arena, and have a Pokemon battle. <laughs> yep, it's gonna happen. <laughs> Yes, we are definitely going to do that. Um, it's just a silly thing. Because I think what happened was someone created a Pokemon mod for that game. And I think the developers took the their Pokeball idea and put it in the actual game. There's so many things they've done with that. They've done a good job at varying it throughout the... Like, we're playing on a, we're playing on a modded level that a, a player made and then the developers took and polished and released for everyone. Yeah, very cool. So it's fun. Um, if you've never played Ark, if you're a fan of like Minecraft and survival uh, building games, it's 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 like that. So um, then I started playing Child of Light again. Uh, Child of Light is a kind of turn-based RPG with a little bit of a twist. I don't want to get too into explaining how that works, but if you like, like Final Fantasy things, um, that like turn-based kind of combat uh, really highly recommend this. It's like a must play for people that enjoy that kind of stuff. Um, really beautiful artwork and stuff too. And then I bought Uno. Uno was on sale. I got 
they're just throwing Microsoft points at people right now to keep them at home. Uh, if you're part of the Microsoft Rewards program. Um, so I got Uno and Uno Flip, which is really fun. And I've been playing some Uno online. Um, it's Uno. It's fun. It has. It's really good. It has some weird flaws with it that really bother me. Um, but other than that, it's pretty good. I didn't expect you to be an Uno player, Dan. It's the weirdest game to get on Xbox. I love Uno. My grandma and I used to play it all the time. Okay. So. It, is, it has similar things with Monopoly. Um, before you play a game, you can choose between like all these like common house rules. So you, when you enter a game, it even will show you. Um, some of my issues with it are, I pick, I'm ninety seven percent sure I was like, I want to play a classic Uno game, and it put me into an Uno flip game. That was kind of weird. Um, when you're playing. There's these other decks you can buy, like a Rabbids deck and stuff like that, and they have these special weird cards I do not want to play with. And when you're playing against a computer, sometimes it will bring, you'll draw one of those cards. You'll be playing a classic random Uno or classic Uno deck. You'll draw a card that's from like the Rabbids thing or from the Just Dance thing, and it does this crazy thing. And when you play it, it gives you an ad for those. And that's super annoying because it's like, I just want to fucking play Uno. I yeah, didn't, that is but, weird. Yeah, so I think that only happens once, I hope, uh, for each deck. Um, but it is weird when you play like, oh, I want to play Classic Uno. Sometimes it will throw you into a game with somebody who has the Rabbids deck where it's like, I don't want to play the Rabbids version. Um, Uno Flip is really fun. Um, enjoying that. Uh, kind of a, just a weird take on it. And then when you're playing the game, if somebody leaves, it just brings someone in and they get their cards. Uh, but last night when I was playing, when that happened, it would just pot like the whole game would just get stuck and I'd have to, everyone would have to leave. So that huh. wasn't, but, um, any other games you guys have been playing? No, that's it for me. Yeah. I'm finally kind of like starting to settle down into a couple of games as opposed to just like trying every game forever. Uh, upcoming games, nothing caught my attention that I thought we should talk about. So, um, kind of slow right now. Some things got delayed. Uh, I'm sure we'll get, we'll get back into some stuff. Let's talk news. So speaking of people staying at home, uh, PlayStation, this is from USA Today. PlayStation is giving, uh, free games away to help people stay at home. Uh, so if you have a PlayStation 4, you can get the Nathan Drake collection, Uncharted, the Nathan Drake, Nathan Drake collection. And, um, you can also get Journey for free. So, Wait, what's, what's the Nathan Drake collection? Like all the Uncharted? Uncharted 1, 2, and 3. Wow. Yep. For free? So, yep. So um, they're giving those away to anybody who has, uh, I think, just a PlayStation. I don't even think you need to have um, their, their deluxe thing. They're just giving them away. Have you so, gotten those yet, Dan? That's like a great value. We have the Nathan Drake collection. Courtney bought okay. that before. Um, I do not have Journey, though. So I might grab that. Um, but yeah, so if you're a PlayStation uh, user and you don't have those games, check them out. It's a nice thing for them to do. I and, do find a lot of... There seems to be a lot of free games or or like uh, achievements or benefits around playing open world games or games that revolve around like scenery or like outdoors or, you know, I, I'm seeing a theme that <laughs> I, I get it get out get out and explore in your own home yeah um this is kind of the big news that kind of came up and it's kind of uh, random at this time but the esrb has introduced a new label to indicate that a game has loot boxes so this is reported by uh, the verge um so in 2018 they added in-game purchases uh to the back so it'll give you a rating uh teen mature whatever and then it'll tell you why and then on the bottom it'll say in-game purchases but now if it has a loot box it also includes includes random items so um if you're listening to this podcast or watching us i'm sure you know what that means but basically if you spend money on things that you don't know what you're getting you're kind of taking a uh a roll the die so that's you know cards that's loot boxes and overwatch um that's going to be reflected on the box from now on is it only monetary purchases or can it be any any type of loot i think it's going to be i think it's only purchases because okay. it's included in the in-game purchases so if a game has in-game purchases it says in-game purchases and then 
If it's random, such as a loot box, it will say include random items. So I my thoughts on this are kind of are kind of interesting because first off, I think that in general, I think there are a lot of parents that don't know what the ESRB is, and I don't think they pay attention to it very much. Um, if they do pay attention to it, I don't think they're going to be looking at that part of the label. I think they're going to be looking at, is it teen? Is it mature? I don't yeah. think they're going to be the ones that are like, oh, is can my child you know, buy things in this? I don't, I don't know if they're going to really pay attention to that. And I think the, the worst, or not the worst, but the biggest part is, I mean, Overwatch is definitely a game you pay for and then it has random items, but most games that have these loot boxes or random items are free games. So you're not going to the store and picking up the case and looking at the back of them. Your child is going online and downloading Fortnite. Your child's going online and downloading, um, or, or yeah, or modern warfare or, um, anything like that. So a lot of these games that have these loot boxes aren't something that you're going to even see the ESRB rating. So no, I also think it's kind of a moot point in that, soon i mean yeah everything has a loot box it's going to be on every box and if it's on every box then it's not much of a warning it's just yeah it's more of a it's it's just another thing you need to be vigilant in if you have a child who doesn't have their own income if your card is attached to that account you need to know it can be used it's the same as it's the same as i i don't know you, your kid's itunes account buying yeah. movies and shit um I mean, good on them for doing that, but yeah, I don't think it's much of a, I don't think it's much of a deterrent. Either they know that is a threat, or they don't. Um, and I don't think that'll really stop anybody from buying a game for a kid. Yeah. If it said like, I don't know, digital gambling or something, maybe that would turn off a couple fundamentalist households, but that's not what it says. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, but I mean, what are they going to do? This is like kind of the best they can do. They can't go into every parent's house and be like, Hey, this is a thing, you know, yeah. they can only put it on the box. I'm, like, I'm not saying they shouldn't have done it. It's it's just, I don't think it really does anything. It's just more of a, like a, Hey, ERC, ESRB, why didn't you do anything about it? It's on the yeah. box. We put it there. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's really all you can do. There's not. Yeah, unless until the government steps in and like makes a law against loot boxes or something like that. Best thing they want, which no, Eh, they could, but will they? Probably not. So, all right. Well, let's take a little break. We'll be back with our main topic, which I'm very excited about, and we'll see you in a bit. Hey everybody, welcome back to Game Goose. Today is Video Game Movies Round 2. So this time we attempted, last time we did this, we all watched a separate video game movie and gave a review. This time we all attempted to watch the same (laughs) two movies. And we almost succeeded. (laughs) Almost succeeded. Uh, We had a little communication mix-up on our... No, it was just a memory issue. (laughs) A memory issue. I was trying to be nice to... (laughs) <laughs> uh we neil and i watched final fantasy the spirits within clinton watched final fantasy advent children correct, correct. So that was called yeah the advent uh, calendar Clint- or something clinton why don't you hit us the advent calendar is that what you just said <laughs> <laughs> uh it takes 30 days to watch and every day you get a piece of chocolate yeah. uh why don't you hit us with uh your review of that and talk about that first okay so don't yeah advent calendar stop at christmas or do they keep going Sorry, this isn't important. I just thought about it. <laughs> I have no idea. I, I don't think an advent calendar has to necessarily has to do be with Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, I think it's just like a one day thing. Something happens, kind of thing. Yeah. So, All like, right. we had one that was um, Marvel Funko Pops, but we didn't do it during Christmas. Advent calendar, children, thirty-one days, Final Fantasy, go click. Uh yeah, so Advent ch- ch- <laughs> Advent Children. <laughs> the reason I, for some reason, thought we were watching that is because Final Fantasy VII remake is coming out, mm-hmm. uh, or part one out. of it, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and so I was like, oh, we're watching the Final Fantasy VII movie. Uh, when I knew that wasn't the case when we were talking about it during the thing, but uh, 
anyways, it's uh, post Final Fantasy VII. Uh, everything that happens in the game has already happened, and this is kind of like in the aftermath of that. So I never played Final Fantasy VII, so I'm probably going to butcher this, but <laughs> there is a energy force called like the Life Stream, and it's from it spouts all life on the planet and then some calamity came this like alien creature came uh and like i think humanity managed to fight it off dan you're falling out the bottom of your camera there uh then humanity managed to fight off this alien and then took its corpse and took dna out of it to make super soldiers uh, and it's some like mega corporation that's doing this, uh, and the mega corporation it got to be a mega corporation because it figured out how to take the life stream and use it as like a power source. So like the world is powered via the force that gives life to all things on the planet. Uh, so anyways, this alien comes, they capture it. The super or super corporation captures it, uses its DNA to make super soldiers. Uh, and then there's one called Sephiroth who's got a really big katana. And, and that's he's kind like, of like the main bad guy of the Final Fantasy Yeah, Sephiroth. Yeah, and yeah. He, he like finds out that this super corporation has like done all these experiments on him and all this stuff, so he just hates everything and everyone and wants to destroy everything is kind of his deal. So I guess in the game you defeat him or whatever, your girlfriend dies, uh, or the main character's girlfriend dies, uh, and then everyone's kind of sad, but everyone's still alive. And the life stream goes back to being the life stream. And they're not using it to power the world anymore. So then the movie comes along. Uh, and everyone that has the DNA from the alien thing, which the life stream was corrupted by it. So some kids have that have been born have this alien DNA in them. Uh, and they're all getting sick and dying. Uh, and then there's some of the soldiers, I'm assuming, from the the super soldiers from the game are trying to find the corpse of the alien in order to turn all the children into super soldiers and then destroy the world. Uh, there's a bunch of big drawn out fight scenes, which are pretty, pretty good. They're pretty epic. Uh, they're fun to watch. Uh, all of the, your allies make cameo appearances. All your allies from the game make cameo appearances uh, and show up, say they're kind of one-liners, and they uh, do this do like you know big... If they're, do you know if they're voiced by the same people that voice them in the games? I would assume, but I don't know. Okay. I uh, have no idea. Never played the game, so I couldn't tell you. But... Uh, there's like a big fight scene at the end where one of the super soldiers who's been like spearheading bringing back this alien that they call the mother uh, and he f somehow ends up consuming the heart of the mother or whatever. It's in this like box uh, and uh, <laughs> she, you're, so he, you're starting, to, you're starting to sound like me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, I, this is fucking heart of a mother and a life stream and he ate it i don't know yeah that's kind of <laughs> kind of yeah uh he he eats the heart and uh he turns into sephiroth the bad guy from the video game gotcha. uh and so sephiroth is the final boss battle of this movie which is an even bigger epic fight where the first fight was on motorcycles, which was pretty cool. And then the second fight was on motorcycles, which was pretty cool. And then the third fight was on motorcycles and then off motorcycles, which was pretty cool. And, <laughs> and then the fourth fight was on motorcycles, which was what? pretty cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> a lot of motorcycles on? Yeah, a lot of, a lot of like over-the-top, goofy-ass looking motorcycles. Yeah, uh right. But then, uh, yeah, so this final fight happens, and they're in this, like, crumbling superstructure. So they're just, like, slicing whole buildings in half and stuff with their swords as they fight each other. That sounds uh, very anime. Yeah, and then Sephiroth ends up stabbing Cloud, who's the main character. Uh, and then Cloud, like, 
goes super saiyan or something and his sword turns into magic and there's like seven swords now and then he slices sephiroth up and then uh that's kind of the end of it and then he's like standing there at the after the end of the fight and everyone's all like ah, woo, we did it we did it and then someone shoots him and you're like oh okay <laughs> Is and it the end? It's two of the. Uh, it was very close to the end. Two of the other super soldiers are standing behind him. One of them had shot him and said, "Like if we die, we all die. We all go together, or something cheesy like that." Because uh, Cloud is also a super soldier or something. I think I'm not quite he, sure it, on that. According to this Wikipedia, it looks like he has the same disease that a bunch of people have. Yeah. The yeah, because he's got the alien DNA in him. Gotcha. Okay. Uh. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah, he gets shot by the other guy and then dies, uh, and gets taken to the afterlife. And I think in the afterlife, the mother says something along the lines, and I'm not sure if it's the mother or if it's his girlfriend, cause I couldn't really follow that, tells him like, oh no, he's moved beyond me and sends him back to the world of the living where there's a bunch of the children that are sick standing around him in a baptism pool. And then he baptizes the rest of the children. And then he sees his girlfriend and I'm guessing someone else who died in the game standing in a doorway. And then they disappear out into the sunshine and then the movie ends. Oh, huh. so he dies. No, he's, he's still alive. Okay. He has a vision of his deceased friends, according to the Wikipedia. This sounds. I I think Clinton has proven that the only way <laughs> to describe a Japanese creation is incredibly sporadically and incredibly confused. And just. Make, I'm sure it would make more sense. I'm sure it would make more sense if, if had, I'd played the game. Right. You know, I'm really happy that you. But it's watched not like this, actually. It's not like super outlandish i mean it's pretty pretty uh sparse in its story and the details yeah. of said story mostly because it's just there for super epic battles and sword fights right. which it has a plenty including motorcycle battles apparently uh, a couple <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh well i'm happy you watch this just so that we can compare it to the one that we watched just in, even though we haven't seen it just because yeah. it's sound different what did you like it i what yeah it? i enjoyed it i mean it was standard typical fair kind of anime movie of big battles laid on the story was it dubbed was it subtitled i watched the subtitled version i'm sure there is a dubbed version because yeah. all of the credits were for the english uh yeah there's there's a i watched the sub version but all the credits dubbed. were for the dubbed versions which was weird <laughs> yeah interesting would so do you want does it make you want to play the game or anything uh i don't know maybe it looks interesting yeah. i mean cloud is like the one final fantasy character i know so that must be the big one yeah he is the big one i that, can't even remember the character of the game i played that game is so forgettable titus uh, titus uh it's a terrible name too uh anyways <laughs> i'm i'm through okay so i played what was that 10 yeah i played 10 i have now heard a good i know a little bit about seven from just being a gamer and and this movie description and dan and i just watched the final fantasy and i'm being a through line between all of them. they really care about spirits after life and the earth as a living entity as as a character uh clinton's had the earth or like kind of life life itself like what was your the life stream were yeah. you talking about yeah i think in our movie there's something called the gaiju which is yeah. like all of the earth we'll get into this do you have anything else you want to add about your movie clinton uh thought... it's enjoyable i had fun watching it it's not like gonna blow you away it's not groundbreaking in any way shape or form but if you want to watch some cool fight scenes uh and the animation is still really good it's just like a computer uh animated kind of uh i don't know how you describe that i'm really bad about that that's like cgi yeah uh but it the animation computer really animated. holds up it's so animated. yeah, yeah. what did it 
when his was 2000 out? his was 2005 okay so we watched final fantasy the spirits within before neil goes on his rant about the plot because i'm gonna let him do that <laughs> <laughs> I would like to say a couple things. First off, came out in 2001. The computer animation is still great, especially for how old it is. Would you agree with that, Neil? No, it's not still great. Now it's awful. For where, <laughs> when it came out, okay. it was phenomenal. Very good. Yes, yes. But it still holds up. Like You're not like, holy crap, this is terrible. It looks like a Halo 1 cutscene. No, it does Halo not look 2. like a Halo one. Halo 2, excuse me. I don't know. You should go back and watch those cutscenes. It's not that I would, bad. It, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It really I is. would I would say it's probably the my review of it, my one sentence review is the longest video game cutscene of all time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but here we go. Here's the thing uh that's crazy about it. So it came out in July of 2001 in America. Um, it cost $137 million to make, which was the highest uh, amount to make a video game movie until Prince of Persia came out in 2010. So for nine years, it held the record for um, most biggest budget for video game movie, but it only grossed $85 million at the box office. So it lost uh, quite, a, quite a bit of money. Here is the, <laughs> the lineup that this movie has. Alec Baldwin. James Woods, Donald Sutherland, Ving Rhames, Steve Buscemi. <laughs> like this Who is, is Ving an... Rhames. Was he Ving the... Rhames? Ving Rhames. Cut out. Yeah, you cut out. No, Ryan. No, no, I was trying to think of that character. Ryan Whitaker. I think he's the black guy on the team. Oh, okay. Um, and there's another guy in there too that I like heard, and I was like, holy crap, he's from like a bunch of video games. I can't even remember right now. But that's just like, that's just the top. So this thing is like star studded. Like it's, it's great cast. Um, why I personally think that it didn't do well is it is a super Americanized version of like what final fantasy is. I think they were really afraid to make it like a Japanese video game. And they probably reeled that back for American audiences. And I think it probably hurt them more than out them. Uh, but all that being said, uh, Neil, so have you taken it away? Tell us what happens. Uh, well, here's the thing. Uh, Clinton, when he proposed this movie to me, he was like, I really want to hear what you have to say about this movie. The yeah. unfortunate thing, I was looking forward to watching, like, first of all, I wasn't expecting, like, 3D rendered decent animation. I mm -hmm. was expecting, like, full-on anime, shaded, like, like bulging, twinkling eyes, and oh, and and no, <laughs> this is some fucking whitewashed bullshit. Yeah, which is yeah. Why I can't even say like I can't go on one of my great anime because what they did was yes, there is the Earth has a life force. It's called the Gaiju, and there's Gaia. a lot of stuff. Of, Gaia, yeah. Gaia. There's a lot of stuff about souls and spirits, and that seems to be a mainstay in the Final Fantasy world. But also, this was meant for a Western audience, so what they really did was they just slapped everything that I'm sure would have been in t some intense, like, fan service anime bullshit is now just, is just, like, standard white guy sci-fi bullshit. Like, yep. here's your proton atom neutralizer. They yeah. just change the shit. I hate both of them. The Japanese one is just more fun to make fun of because it's more interesting and they do more. There's more twist. This yeah. is just a run of the mill B sci fi movie, only they spent half a, a million and a half dollars and with a cast they didn't need. Yeah, it is. And You've keep seen this in movie mind before. that this is 2001. Yeah. At Alec Baldwin. This is 2001 <laughs> Steve Buscemi. They still had names. Not that they're nobodies now, but this yeah. was closer to their peak. And rest in peace, uh, peace uh, Donald Sutherland. He's the fucking yeah. best, and his voice is stellar. And um, also, the main female character is voiced by an Asian lady who is in... She was in uh, Make of Hawaii... Uh, the Hawaii 911, Hawaii, the cop show on Hawaii. She was in uh, Marvel Agents of Shield. Um, and, oh, and yeah. One of, the, one of the very first, her name's, Mi, I'm not going to say her name. I, I don't think Donald Mana. Sutherland's dead, Neil. Did he not die? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I think not, maybe he didn't die. Ming, Ming Na Wen 
is yes. my best. Okay. So no, nope, he's a- 84 years old. He's still alive. Oh, good job, Donald Sutherland. <laughs> I don't know why I thought he died. Uh, John Hurt I died. I, he's, he retired from acting, though. He's not doing that anyway. Um, <laughs> but there's a scene where I looked up the cast before, and I knew who she was from a couple of projects. And uh, she's she's kind of covered in the helmet for a bit, um, but eventually I see, and, and it's also animated. Sometimes it can be a little hard to pick out racial features, unless they're like black versus white. Can we like, can she, we back? I want to back up real quick because what? you're talking you're talking about the main character. So by the way, Square Pictures made this game of uh, this uh, show, and this basically bankrupt them for the most part because they didn't it didn't do well. Also, their intention was to make ache. Akai Ross, Akai, I can't remember how they were saying your name, the main character, into the words, world's first photorealistic computer animated actress. And the plan was for her to have appearances in multiple films in different roles. That's bullshit. And her name was <laughs> Aki. Aki, there we go. That's how they said it. So <laughs> the idea was to create a digital actress that was going to start in final fantasy and was going to be a celebrity that was digital by the way she did not transcend the medium um (laughs) she is a white girl named aki voiced by an asian actress who should have just been a lead asian character you never meet her parents they didn't need to discuss all the people in final fantasy are kind of white looking though just in general yeah I, i guess you're right. Yeah. You're right. It, yeah. It, I think if this movie was made today, she would have been an Asian character. She would have been animated as at least more than what she was. Neil, yeah, disconnect I also... and reconnect real quick. All right. So since Neil has to disconnect and reconnect, I'll take it over for a second. Um, the voice acting is great. I mean, you, you got this cast. It's awesome. Uh, just I guess where it kind of just lacks is the fact that the plot is just blah. It's nothing. It's nothing. It's really just a medium. It's not bad. It's not good. But you have so many, so many just stereotypical things. People sacrificing themselves for the greater good. You kind of see it coming. There's a really forced uh, romantic storyline between uh, the main character and Alan Bal- Alec Baldwin's oh, character. Yeah, let me take this. Let me take this. You, yeah, take it back. <laughs> uh, no, just I want to. Here's the first note I wrote about this movie. People tell me if this rings any bells. Spiky female scientist endangers self and others in pursuit of object that first looks insignificant but later becomes a major plot point. Yes. <laughs> I wrote that before I knew it would become a major plot point, and it did. Yes. Uh, that is also exactly, well, damn near the note I wrote for Doom when I watched it. Yes. <laughs> it's it's so stereotypical. So let's just start at the beginning. It's in the future. Uh, post-apocalyptic Earth is infested by alien life forms that are called phantoms. Um, what phantoms do is they consume the Gaia spirit of living beings. So everybody has Gaia, including the soul. Earth. Yes. So the Gaia, the sorry, the phantoms will come and take your soul out of you and eat it, and you'll die. Um, and James Woods is a general, and his idea is that they are going to shoot a giant beam into basically what is holding, which eventually you find out is the Gaia spirit of this alien race. Um, but Dr. Sid, who is Donald Sutherland, says, no, no, no. We can't do that because in doing that, we will hurt the Earth's Gaia. So and they everyone's go, like, hold on, you crunchy granola hippie. If we can <laughs> win this war, let's shoot yes. the laser. Yes. So um, the main character, can you, what was, how did you say her name again, Neil? Aki. Aki. So Aki proves to everybody that um, Gaia is real and all this kind of stuff because. She's been infected. She her her Gaia wasn't eaten, but she came in close contact, and she's infected with them. And she like has visions about it, and it, it got, basically just says like, "Hey, we can't do this. We will hurt the Earth's Gaia." Which does it even say what will happen if they hurt the Earth's Gaia? Everyone the, will the, die. Nope, the Earth's life force will die. I mean, that's all you know. <laughs> uh, so they convince everybody that there's eight spirits. If they bring the eight spirits together, they can 
save everybody and destroy the phantom. This weird pseudoscience spiritual mumbo jumbo. <laughs> I don't know how they thought this would play for a Western audience in 2001 that was just discovering yoga. Like, <laughs> they were not. Time out, time out. That is so off base. They were just discovering yoga. Like the Beatles didn't go to India in the 60s. What are you talking no, about? I'm talking, I'm talking about the U.S. audience that was still enamored with Fazoli's all you can eat breadsticks. We weren't ready for this shit. But but no, time out though. Remember, I think this is where they messed up, what I said in the beginning. They made it too Western because people here were already playing Final Fantasy and loved Final Fantasy. They should have just gone small, all out. No, no, no. You're thinking in a very small sliver. You were thinking about <laughs> gamers that play Final Fantasy. Yes, they're the people that made up this op uh, that, that But made who is this movie look- for if not them? This this movie <laughs> was supposed to be for everyone to love this new computer generated actress that would transcend this movie and be Come the next Meryl Streep, which clearly didn't happen. They <laughs> needed this to land with everybody, and they came uh, at Midwestern house moms with <laughs> Earth energy and alien phantoms. They I were mean, doomed. Although, hang on, real quick though, Avatar is one of the highest grossing movies of all time, and it has a Avatar lot of this kind of bullshit. Came out a lot later, and also <laughs> had a lot more money behind it. Yeah, and yoga had- was happening by then, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Yo-Yo is very well established. People, people were ready for with for neck orgasms, <laughs> te- neck tentacle <laughs> orgasms. Uh, did you know that they they uh, fucking edited that scene out of Avatar on Disney Plus? Really? Yes the the sex scene, which isn't really a sex scene, just their their like braids intertwining is gone. <laughs> um, in addition to that, there's uh, the movie Splash edits out the the mermaid <laughs> as they edit. They put more hair onto her hair so on it her covers butt. her butt. It just <laughs> looks like there's a a blonde welcome mat on her butt. Yeah, it's so bad. Anyhow, so bad. anyhow, oh, continue. Deal. Yeah, I, but I mean, like Avatar was one based it based on a very familiar sto- uh, story, uh, Dances with Wolves. Uh, which is and done, Pocahontas and 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 and, and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was it was standard fare and was treated as such at the box office. This was granted not as anime and Final Fantasy as it could have been, but they definitely didn't walk it back all the way they needed to to get your moms and dads in their forties and you know forties and fifties to go to the movie theater and watch this. I, I don't know. I don't think I, Alec Baldwin had that pulling power. He yeah. clearly didn't. No, I think in the long run, I think like Advent Children, what Clinton watched was probably a better move. Spend less money on your target audience as opposed to trying to draw everybody, everybody in. I, and here's the thing. I don't know Final Fantasy well enough to know like fan service. Like if you're yeah. going to make a movie, you got to... You oh, gotta play the hits. Seven is it, just straight up fan service too, because it's at the very beginning, like before the movie even starts, it's like this story is for all of those who lived in the world and love the characters in it, <laughs> or something like that. It's just like and, this okay. is fan service for people that it, play it, the it, game. And here's but the thing, like Final know Fantasy, your audience. And the, here's the other thing, though. Final Fantasy, every story is different, right? Like every game, there's not a there's not a through storyline or anything. It's not like oh, I can't wait for seven because I I finished six and I got to know what happens. It's not how it works. So Final Fantasy: The Spirits Within is a completely separate thing. It has nothing to do with any of the games, which is what they were going for. Uh, where seven or what Advent Children is like, oh, it's for the people who played seven. It's hard to do fan service when it's like there's nothing to fan service. We're not going to bring in characters from the other games and stuff, you know. Which is. Which is here? Here is what happened. I will tell you exactly what happened. I, somebody found a great sci-fi script, and they said, "Yo, Final Fantasy is super popular right now. Let's toss what's this called? Uh, the Spirits Within. What if we do Final Fantasy colon the Spirits Within, and just add some Earth Spirit mumbo jumbo shit in there? We'll get all their money as well. Deal, deal. It didn't work." But that is exactly what happened. That's probably only, what happened. Only J.J. Abrams can do that shit. 
<laughs> buying things for his Cloverfield franchise. Yeah, and it works, except for that weird Netflix one, which wasn't bad, but it's okay. Yeah, uh, no, I kind of agree. Like, other than like the spirit stuff, it is so just stereotypical sci-fi. Yeah, I was so excited for someone to throw like, here is a cat girl meowing at a at a. <laughs> I don't know. It got furry there, but that's what I think of anime. I was I was ready for that level, and it was just Alec Baldwin kind of half-assing his way through a script. <laughs> <laughs> yeah actually he was not a great voice actor steve buscemi i thought did a good job yeah it's easy to be the comic relief he did fine yeah. but he he got some pretty good lines in there yeah anyhow basically um it's just so stereotypical stuff like there's like barrier cities where they can hide from the phantoms which is like a classic sci-fi thing oh the human race is been stuck and doing like a different thing and james was wants to shoot that laser they're like we can't shoot the laser we have to get all eight of the spirits is the another theme i'm seeing is somebody in power being corrupted james woods is a military official maybe the official he's a general um and basically um in order to Proved to everybody that he's right and the eight spirit bullshit is wrong. He lowers the defenses on the one of their outposts. The guy or the phantoms come in and they like kill a bunch of people. And then they have to go and they have to get the seventh spirit, but it gets destroyed somehow. And they find out he's the seventh spirit, and th- it gets kind of confusing in the end. Yeah, um, uh, I didn't really follow towards the end. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I was supposed to. Here are the rest of my notes. Uh, lame monsters, pretty cool kills, though. The yes. monsters are just like orange and blue, like transparent. They have to, yeah, Some they're them, like ghosts. So they have to shoot like a flare that will like reveal them before they can even see them and shoot yeah. them. Uh, but, okay, so they just kind of look like, they actually, there's two kinds. There's humanoid versions that kind of look like the walking flood. They have these tentacles yes. coming out of their shoulders and weird bulbous pods. And when they grab you, they pull your spirit out. They, like, wrap around your blue spirit and they pull it out of your body and you're dying. The, the kills looked pretty cool. Uh, yeah. The monsters, I did not think, were very original. Um, some of yeah. the really bigger ones, they have, like, giant leviathan ones. And they just swing their tentacles, and then, like, your spirit would just get pulled out of your body. There wasn't any agony. It's like, oh, it's over. And I'm not looking for a slasher here, but next note, I would have enjoyed more uh, public endangerment. Like, we are dealing with a, like a, a crisis the world has never seen, like an apocalyptic event. And they really didn't show much of the stakes. There was one scene yeah. where you saw, like, a good three or four people get killed, but everything else you'd like come into and a room and you'd see a bunch of bodies. Yeah, I, would, that, I would have liked to know what the horror was. There was like these moments. Um, so Alec Baldwin has a squad with Steve Buscemi and like all these guys with Ving Rames. And there's a moment where they kind of have their last stand and they die. And when, as they're dying, it's playing this epic music. And it's like, am I supposed to be sad? Like <laughs> these guys are like no character like at all. Yeah, no. Um, but basically, uh, so at the end they get the eighth spirit. Oh, fucking! Wait, I got more oh, notes here. All right, then, then <laughs> roll through your notes. I didn't know you wrote a whole novel on this. <laughs> uh, it is what I do for a living, Dan. I take notes on movies. True. Evil true. commanders love them some leather. Leather. James Wood's character is at all points head to toe covered in oh. black leather. I will say that that's probably that's the one a Final thing. Fantasy thing. I was oh going to say that that is probably the one fu- uh, Final Fantasy fan service stuff. The costumes that they have on the characters are Final Fantasy, hundred percent. Every oh, bad yeah. guy in every Final Fantasy game, I think, is just decked out in black leather, head to toe, <laughs> <laughs> for the most part. In ten, they're priests, so they have like those white robes. But yes, that's the theme. So the even the even guy. in uh, even in. Uh, Kingdom Hearts, they all just wear black leather suits. Yep, yep. Yep, he's got these, you just always know, like, it'll never start on his face, but it'll start with, like, a black leather glove on a phone or on a glass of whiskey. I'm like, okay, here's James. What's up, James? Yep. Uh, uh, highlight of the movie is James Woods yelling at a system overload warning. 
when he's trying to fire this massive gun, gun again, and it won't yes. go. This bleep, this robot voice comes on, and it goes, system overload, system overload. And he keeps messing with the buttons, and he's blah, blah, blah. System overload, I know. System overload, I know. System overload, I know. Oh, and it's not like an intelligent AI. He's just losing his shit, yelling at a computer <laughs> yes. in James Wood's voice. And that was yeah. all I needed. That was the best part of the movie. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It it's he uh that's how he eventually dies. Yeah, and uh the ending is incredibly flat. It really goes oh. out with a whimper. Um it was over and I was like, that that's it? Is that it? <laughs> Yeah. Everybody, everybody dies except for our girl and the lead and her like, I, not her father, but her father figure kind of role model. Stay yeah. alive, the two scientists. And man, yeah. they really just. And then it ends with what? Okay, this is straight out of what I know of Japanese games. It ends with us with a song that has lyrics that totally doesn't need lyrics. It's not a song you know. It's just like, here we are with all the honor. And that's the that, that was the super fast song, <laughs> which totally doesn't need lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> that yes, okay. <laughs> that's super funny. Um so basically the person the main character who can who has is infected she has visions about it she finds out that because at one point they're like there's humanoid phantoms and there's like all these other phantoms i think they're like they're elephants and they're like what the fuck that doesn't make any sense so it turns out that the asteroid that came and hit earth everyone thought it was an attack but it wasn't an attack it was the a- aliens coming and they all died so the phantoms are actually their Wait, ghosts. i'm still trying to figure out why you just said elephant because that's what they say in the movie Oh, I missed that. Okay. Yes, they literally like. What are those? Those there's the human ones and there's the big ones. And she's like, I think they're like they're elephants. So uh, okay. basically, a chunk <laughs> of another planet crashed into our planet. Everyone thought it was an attack, but it was really just a mistake. When their planet exploded, they came here. They died. They became the phantoms. When they get all eight spirits together, they uh, get the Earth Gaia to heal and shoot the phantoms into space and put them at peace, um, and then. Alec Baldwin sacrifices himself for some reason. <laughs> I can't remember exactly he why. He needed a human conduit. She needed a human yes conduit. to put it was the this last whole spirit bullshit. into. Yeah, because like one of the spirits gets destroyed, and they find out they can remake it, but it gets really convol- convoluted very quickly at the end, which is weird. Because like at the beginning, I'm like, oh, this isn't as that weird for a final fantasy movie and then suddenly it's like spirits and we gotta make a new one and you gotta be in it but then you die and i'm like oh, okay all right but and then it just like over like she comes up holding his body and i was like okay now we're gonna see like a funeral and some wrap up and then it like literally like pans from him her holding the body to the sunset plays the music and rolls the credits nobody says it's over nobody <laughs> says Nothing. we're safe now i you feel like see- they were like I feel like they the, were like the sanctuary cities like celebrating. Nope. It's I like, feel like they we were like got no more money. <laughs> yep. We need to end this. No. <laughs> we got it. This is the end. Like it's like climax and end. There's no come down at all. It just ends, but it was fine. It was really stereotypical. The it more didn't... I talk about it, the worse it is. <laughs> it was fine to watch. With the actors they hired. The animation they did, I think they paid for everything but their script. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right, let's move on to our other movie. Um, this is one we, we all watched about, together. We should have talked about Mortal Kombat first, because I didn't think we would have that much material for the two. But anyways, <laughs> Mortal Kombat. See, I think we have less about this. Um, it was awful. Watch Mortal it Kombat. was absolutely awful. It was not awful. It was Get awful. It was an awful movie. The acting in it was absolutely the acting atrocious. In it is terrible. The jokes are so bad. The jokes are terrible. The jokes are absolutely awful. The story is... I mean, it's a Mortal bad. Kombat story. It's... There's the acting like, in the script is terrible. Yeah, the fight scenes were awful. The choreography of the fights were like just bad. Uh, the whole They're thing fine. was just yes. bad. Yes. It was just bad. And okay, you put so all of that together, and you get a really good B movie. <laughs> it was 
It was more fun to watch than Final Fantasy. So, so the, some of the things that stand out to me as far as like awful acting is anytime Sonya Blade's trying to act like a soldier or like Sonya Blade is when she has a one, gun. When she movie. has a gun and she's like walking through a room or anything, it is the absolute like stiffest, most awkward thing I've ever seen anyone do. <laughs> okay, so remember we said uh, Final Fantasy. What spent like 125 million dollars and made 81 million dollars? Yeah, yeah. In 2001, this is 1995. Uh, it cost 18 million dollars to make Mortal Kombat, and they made 122.1 million dollars. Yeah, well, I'm not yeah, surprised. Yeah. It's so bad. The, so the story of it is, uh, there's three main characters: Sonya Blade, mm-hmm. uh, Johnny Cage, and What's Liu, Kang. Liu Kang. Uh, and they are all brought together onto this phantom pirate ship thing, skull decked out, super kitschy kind of pirate ship. It's like uh, the Asian version of the the Dutchman, the flying Dutchman ship. Yeah. Uh, can, and we, then, can we back up real quick, though, before we go move on? The one thing I think is like 10 out of 10, the sets. Yeah, are the so sets are really good. The sets are amazing. Right. Sets are the thing where you're like, okay, if there's one thing from this movie that is amazing, because it's none of it's CGI or computer yeah. animated, it is like they built awesome sets for this movie. Yeah, the the one that really blew my mind was the when he goes into Scorpion's like lair. Yes, and me too. There's just like bamboo scaffolding everywhere, and they're fighting yeah. on it all. That was really cool. Very cool. But anyways, they get on this boat together uh, for whatever. They all have different reasons. Liu Kang's trying to avenge his brother. Johnny Cage is trying to prove that he's a real martial artist, and Sonya mm-hmm. Blade's trying to, uh, partner. yeah, kill the dude that killed her partner. Kang, Kano, Kano. Yeah. Um, can we also just back up real quick about uh, Johnny Cage and him being an actor? He's a martial artist actor. Yeah. And he, his, God, this movie's so fucking 90s. Yeah. <laughs> the jokes written for him and everything about him is so 90s. His whole, th- his whole thing is that he's just an ego and he needs yes. to like please his ego. Okay, yeah. but can I say, okay, number one, yes, that seems super cringeworthy now. And I'm not, I'm not giving, I'm not giving them proper props for like, breaking any barriers or stuff or anything but they did make a white guy the bunt of all the jokes in a in a mid 90s movie it's pretty diverse actually for and he doesn't get to be the hero in the end it is very diverse for a 90s movie i I i'm not that is (laughs) rare i'm not saying they deserve anything for it i mean they did make raiden the White. outlander or whatever okay here's <laughs> not outlander what is it notes. highlander <laughs> yeah Ray, here's Dude. note number one i'll share raiden, raiden and his raiden dumb lives. voice that he uses through the I first half of the movie raiden. he uses it for the first half of the movie and then he just stops did you notice that he's like also, uh, it's me well, raiden he's played by he's some and then, sort of european actor he's not american it was awful it's the guy that plays the highlander isn't it um let's see here fucking christopher lambert he was the second worst um the second worst uh acting in it <laughs> yeah next to sonia blade there's just, there's one point where he's just like you guys are gonna go fight and you might die <laughs> sorry Dude, that, that wasn't funny he <laughs> <laughs> he's like <"Hey>, <laughs> sorry that's not funny <laughs> but he's got so he's got raiden's rice patty hat on when you first meet him and he's looking down and then i don't know much about about final uh, or about Mortal Kombat, and I've seen this movie before, but it was when I was a kid. He lifts his hat up, and I literally went because <gasps> I realized he was white. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're supposed to be white. Are you supposed to be white? And then I googled it, and he's actually pretty and kind of androgynous in the games too. Ambigu- he's ambiguous, in- <laughs> like racial, not androgynous, oh, not androgynous <laughs> ambiguous. <laughs> Oh my god. But he's walking when you meet him, he's in the middle of like this, you know, this like Buddhist temple. Yeah. Yeah. Like there's people in robes all around them. All characters are clearly devout monks and everyone is Asian and then he lifts up his hat to the thunder god. You're fucking white dude. Get out what? (laughs) 
<laughs> uh, but yeah, so they all get on the ship and they go to this private island where Raiden has no power but still has his powers. Well, uh, hold on, hold on. Apparently, Cameron Diaz was supposed to be Sonya Blade. That would have been much better. Neil, you've got to stop interrupting me or we're never going to finish. <laughs> That's true. Instead, That's true. we got the girl who would go on to be the love interest in Billy Madison. <laughs> Anyways, they get to this private island <laughs> uh, where this sorcerer has, you see, he's like set up all these machinations to bring everyone here. Uh, and he is the, the sorcerer from another planet. Uh, and he's working for the emperor of this other planet. Uh, and how he gets his power is that he consumes the souls of those he's defeated in battle or who have been defeated in battle or whatever. Uh, and so he's running this tournament, this Mortal Kombat tournament. And uh, they have to do 10 tournaments. And if they win 10 tournaments, then uh the emperor can bring his forces over into earth and take over the earth and drain the earth of its resources so Which they're on the terrible ten... plan by the way yeah <laughs> who made these rules we never know <laughs> yeah why 10 in a row that's <clears throat> totally unfair that you have to win 10 in a row to win they don't specify how the frequency at which these tournaments can occur. It's once every generation, Neil. Isn't that clear cut enough for you? Uh, people live longer each generation. <laughs> but anyways, they yeah, yeah, this is ahead. the 10th tournament. They've won nine yes. of them. So this one, if they lose the tournament, the earth will be destroyed and consumed by the emperor and his forces. Also, so can we say that, that this is where the first Mortal Kombat game actually starts? Is on the ninth, ter- the tenth tournament. Is it? Yes. Um, can Can we point out that Raiden is very cocky for losing nine before this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's like, we got. That he has fought and lost in them. It seems like he's just watched people lose nine times in a row. He's like, nah, right. now nah, they got it. <laughs> Wait, we're cool. I've been bringing, I've been bringing humans up here to die for nine. <laughs> Nine generations, they've been getting their asses kicked, but this time it'll all be good. Don't worry, I'm Earth Realm's protector. We got this. <laughs> I've only killed dozens of people every year, every generation. Excuse me. But the tournament starts. There's a bunch of like really cheesy Mortal Kombat stuff where he's like, mm-hmm. "Finish him!" Oh, oh fatality. God! No, that so is bad. called fan service. That's what makes this movie not good, but what it needed to be. Yeah, but it's still super fucking thing. cheesy and like it's so awful. It's it, <laughs> so it, cheesy. It, it, it boxed double what it was worth. It did its job. I, and by the way, doesn't it matter. It's still an service. awful movie. No, no. Grab them quickly. Yes, it it starts with this is made by New Line Cinema. Usually you got the logos. Every film company logo has its own soundscape. Fuck that. This is Mortal Kombat. First frame of the picture. New Line Cinema. Mortal Kombat! Mm, that is true. This song was made for this movie. That song was it, made for this movie. And it fucking got them. It slaps. <laughs> it slaps. I will, I will say that it's probably the best part of the movie is that song. Yeah. I uh, lead with it. They know what they got. <laughs> so anyways they show up at this island this tournament's starting the sorcerer supreme shows off all of his like henchmen fighters which are sub-zero and scorpion yes uh and they have like a fight sub-zero freezes a dude and shatters him uh <laughs> like after flipping over the tables that have all the feasts that everyone's eating and stuff yeah but uh necessary flips yeah uh yes. yeah lots of flipping and like just jumping off of things for no reason Scorpion looks pretty terrifying. He's got, he's like a good martial artist. Sub Zero looks like a wet noodle in blue suit. He's doing all this weird like I don't know. He's like it's probably I, just a different form of martial art. Yeah, but it's not it's not a visually appealing one. Uh, <laughs> he looked like he was melting. And so the tournament starts. Uh, Sonya Blade kills the guy she's coming to kill. Uh, how, by the way, that's actually a big issue I have with this movie, just in general. How unsatisfying is it that Sonya Blade comes, they all have, like, the three things they want to do, as Quentin mentioned. Sonya Blade comes, and she does hers, like, immediately. Right? Yeah. And well, then, yeah. 
And then and she's just the damsel in distress what? for the rest of the movie. Yeah, what the <laughs> yeah. fuck? It's he like had to change so she role. comes. It was the mid nineties, Dan. But like, I love she comes. She's the only person who's like, I'm good enough to do what I want to do the first try, and, and it becomes like this fucking damsel in distress. I'm like, that is lame. Uh, but then it like cuts the scene of this four armed dude named Goro, uh, oh. and then. Goro and that whatever gets killed by getting kicked in the nuts. uh, Or punched in the nuts is how he ends up dying. Okay, hold on. He can't recap this movie. He's not doing it. Just (laughs) He's doing fine. Also, Goro is made with the best of the 90s technology. (laughs) Yeah. He looks like like a Ninja Turtle from the Ninja Turtles movie. (laughs) Yes. I was going to say he looked like Jabba the Hutt with four arms. (laughs) That too, yeah. Yeah. then Johnny Cage goes to fight Scorpion in his little, uh, I don't know what you call it, demi-realm or something. Uh, they teleport into it, and uh, it doesn't explain how he gets back out of it. It just appears back on Earth. <laughs> yeah, uh, I thought about that. <laughs> after exploding. Explodes. After <laughs> Scorpion explodes. <laughs> For why? I don't know. Yeah, he I gets on it. fire, rips his skull mask off, yes. his eyes start he burning, and then he chops his head in half and he explodes. <laughs> just glowing with red light, littered with corpses, bamboo scaffolding everywhere. His enemy explodes. <laughs> And I think he just follows the exit spot, and, <laughs> yeah. and then he drops he drops a picture that says, "For my biggest <laughs> fan, Johnny Cage." <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. Ah. it's so bad, it's good. Uh, and then Liu Kang uh, gets told by Raiden or someone like, "Hook up with Katara or Katana." K- yes, Katana's Katana. The true... She's the Emperor's adopted princess or daughter but she's actually the daughter of the people who ruled her world before the emperor came and reaped all of the uh resources you know, and stuff out of it and she's as like you're talking about it Clint, I'm, years old. Yes. yes as you're talking about it, I'm realizing there's a lot more plot than really <laughs> there's movie a lot kind to of, it <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> the movie kind of like because as you're watching the movie you're like oh there's like not a lot of plot they just kind of do these martial arts but as you're talking about it, i'm like oh, there's kind of a lot to this movie <laughs> so anyways they fight all the people on earth uh the sorcerer steals uh sonya blade and tells mm-hmm. her like ah you have to fight me it's me and you for the last battle and, and puts her in a slave outfit yeah and then raiden is like well no like uh well, there's another rule, and then Liu Kang, like, oh yeah, no, she has to accept the battle or whatever. So let's go save her. Uh, and Luke, uh, not Luke Cage, sorry, Johnny Cage is like, he says something. He sets up a fight, right? Where he's I, like, whoever you want me to fight, I will fight. And then uh, Raiden's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then the the guy's like, no, no, it's already been done. And Johnny Cage is like, no, this is Mortal Combat. This is for us. We're the mortals. And then Raiden's like, finally, he gets it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which, That's where he fights. If there's any, if there's any like plot buoy in this movie, it's that there are a lot of rules to this that they don't explain <laughs> and they don't bring up until they need to save the movie. Yeah. Yep. She didn't accept the fight. You have to say yes to a fight to the death. Like, yep. <laughs> but you're allowed. But somehow, with all these rules, you're still allowed to capture her and take her to another world. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you're allowed to sick like they at one point they sick like thirty enemies on fighters. But this yeah. isn't a this isn't a regulation match, guys. Yes. <laughs> so so anyways, part, they walk through like a monster's about. giant colon and teleport <laughs> to the other to the other mm-hmm. world where the El- the emperor lives, uh, and then he fights reptile. Yes. Who just like appears out of nowhere, out of like well, some reptile has been sent to spy on you. Yeah. Uh, yes. My favorite part is so reptile is a lizard man, but they couldn't, they didn't have enough money or enough technology to make him a lizard man the whole time. So he's really a really poorly made lizard man, lizard man, until Liu Kang fights him and throws him into a statue, and then he reemerges as a, a human. scorpion <laughs> person. Like he looks like scorpion, but with green and a green with outfit. Green. Yeah, yes. which is what he is in the game. He's just a palette in, swapped scorpion in the old games. Yeah. Now he's a fully full lizard man. Which, by uh, the way, that that was one of the best fight scenes in the movie. The reptile Luke, one, reptile versus Luke. Where Luke Kang does his cool. bicycle kicks. 
Yes, yes. That's that's fan service again. They're doing yeah. the bicycle kicks. Also, I hated the part where backing up Katana and Liu Kang fight, but they're not really fighting. And Katana's <laughs> like, you in your next battle, <laughs> oh, right. use the Forgot element that. that gives life. And then so he fights Sub Zero and he throws a bucket of water at Sub Zero, which as it gets close to him turns into an freezes sphere. <laughs> turns into a yeah. <laughs> and stabs Sub Zero. Which is like, first off, why did it turn into a spear? Second, why didn't it just say, hey, when you fight Sub Zero, use that bucket of water? Well, well it shows Raiden just like, <laughs> I'm just carrying this water. And he like right. sets it down and like takes a drink, like kind of looks around and then like scampers no. off. So the water's there for the fight with Sub Zero. <laughs> <laughs> it's also like a lot of the first matches you see take place outside in like this ring sand ring with a circle <laughs> yeah. and an audience and that weird sorcerer's there to like watch and suck up the bodies after someone loses and then Fatality. after the first two fights it just appears to be like just wherever <laughs> room, two people walk in and know they're fighting without anybody to win the victory yep yep love it so anyways they teleport to the emperor's realm uh katana meets up with them they go to the the ring room where sonya blades chained up and uh Mm -hmm. the sorcerer's like you have to fight me and she's like no my friends are coming to save me they'll come and he's like no you have to fight me and she's like my friends are coming and then uh johnny cage pulls off his mask or his hood and he's standing next to he's like we're already here (laughs) and then (laughs) Luke Kang's like, you have to fight me. <laughs> and so then yes. the sorcerer in uh <laughs> what's his name? I keep forgetting. Luke Kang. Luke Kang. Uh have like a fifteen minute battle where the sorcerer summons dead enemies from uh that he's sucked up souls from the past, and then they like walk up around this ramp up to like this platform above where they were fighting and there's the mortal Kombat logo in the floor and yes. for some reason all of these spears just slowly raise up out of the floor <laughs> through the tin foil that covered them before yeah. <laughs> uh, and there's just a bunch of spikes below them and uh katana's like before was like you have to face your three fear you have to face three challenges you have to fight Wait. Your Hold enemy, on. you have to fight yourself, Hold and you have to fight your on. biggest fear. <laughs> yes, enemy, yourself, and biggest fear. And none of them make any fucking sense. First of all, enemy, number one, he summons about five different fighters across different time periods in America. There's a weird, like, monk. Uh, there's a weird, like, Genghis Khan-type warrior. There's pick five different Asian fighters from different generations. They all showed up. None of them know his name. They're not enemies. They've never met. There's no <laughs> nemesis system here. I guess enemy is just five people that want to kill you simultaneously. In the midst of what should be a 1v1 match. Like, what the fuck? How is this not against the rules? Number two, yourself. I was like, okay, Shadow Link fight. He's going to make another... Link. He's going to make another... Uh, what's his name? Liu Kang. Kang. No, no Liu Kang. He's just really got to get over the hump beating the evil sorceress that's sorcerer that's it he's just got to really believe he can do it i guess that's fight number two it's unclear fight number three your your greatest fear which i guess is self-doubt which I think we, <laughs> we kind of covered in number two in thinking that he couldn't do it he decided he could do it so he got over the second hump and now number three is more of the second hump and yeah. guys Via his dead brother, his soul dead brother. Yes, <laughs> uh, but yes, he eventually kicks him off the platform down into the spears, of course, mm-hmm. uh, and then uh, the sorcerer kind of explodes, uh, releasing all the souls that he's captured, and then his brother shows up and tells him, "Like, hey, good job, love you, miss you, see you, see you next time." <laughs> and then they go back to Earth, and they're like, it's like in that denouement period, and they're all like happy and like clapping hands and walking up to the buddhist temple and they're like oh yeah like we did it we saved everyone and then like there's a bunch of storms because raiden's with them and then all of a sudden the buddhist temple explodes and there's just this giant monster there and it's like it's me the emperor you have to fight me now because i'm mad like wait what was the whole point of this fucking tournament if this guy can just show up because because 
Um, he doesn't get to Sang- bring his forces though. Because Sang Sung is a like a works for the Emperor. So now that the Emperor has lost, he's very angry. Yeah. yeah but, but again, yeah, but they don't follow the rules. <laughs> <Yeah. lost. laughs> The tournament. The tournament that What's the point of the tournament if you're just gonna show up anyways? I wanna go back. I wanna find the origins of who sat down and said, All right, I wanna take over Earth. And their guy goes, No, 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 you can't take over Earth. Here's the deal. You can take over Earth, but only if we have a tournament once every generation. And if you win ten of them (laughs) in a row. Then you're good. And I, wa- and I want to hammer this out right now. We will not specify how many people can fight on either team, how many <laughs> realms are involved, what type of fighters you can bring, what constitutes a vi- victory, where the fighting arena will be held. Also, we I will love... have suitable accommodations and many feasts. <laughs> I also love the fact that you have like the situation where like Sonya Blade's supposed to be like a soldier or a police officer. Special, special forces. forces. Yeah. Okay, because like they get to like Liu Kang, Sonya Blade, Johnny Cage get to this tournament and are suddenly very cool with just murdering people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she just snaps. Yeah, that guy's like, "Give me a break!" And she just squeezes her thighs together and snaps his neck. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm like, "Whoa!" Why do they it's suddenly like, like yeah, what's the murder? Just people? Really her original <laughs> fatality, right? Is the thigh squeeze neck break? I think so. They do do a lot of stuff. And Johnny Cage's <laughs> special move in like all the games is he drops down and punches people in the nuts, which is what he does to Prince Goro. And then uh, he leads him outside and kicks him off a cliff. But anyways, the tableau at the very end, Raiden and all of them are like, you can't have the Earth because we're here to protect it. And then it just goes like tableau of them like rushing to yep. fight this giant monster. <laughs> we'll have to We'll have to watch the other ones. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> yeah. it definitely was like we're making another one. <laughs> yeah. 1997 Mortal Kombat Annihilation came out, but and they had two television series as well. It was awful. I'm sure the second one's just as bad, if not worse. Oh, for sure. But I'm down to watch it. Danny says don't watch the second one, which means I definitely will watch. The second one. <laughs> <laughs> See, like I feel like Mortal Kombat and Final Fantasy to me, they're both equal on how good they are. Yeah, they were good and bad in different ways. Um, but I think that Mortal Kombat was more fun to watch because it's so bad that it's like fun to like be like this is ridiculous. Where like Final Fantasy is like, oh man, they really tried. <laughs> it didn't turn out the way they wanted it to. You know what Mortal I mean? Mortal Kombat was I knew what I was getting into. I was like, this is going to be the awful movie that will make me happy, but won't be anything of substance at the end. Where Final Fantasy kind of felt like watching that kid that's almost talented perform at the talent show. <laughs> <laughs> i can agree with that i can agree with that and the funny thing is i watched mortal Kombat first so i was like all right let's get their really shitty whatever out of the way then i'll watch final fantasy and be like it's like a palate cleanser and i was like eh, they're both not great yeah i mean we knew this though there hasn't been a there wasn't a great video game movie for a very very long time they're yeah. still debatable debatable if there really is <laughs> like detective pikachu is better than endgame Detective Pikachu is good. It is not better than Endgame. <laughs> Endgame's awful. But, but that but all right. That's that's your thing. Neil Neil uh gets Endgame's flack. Sunny. What Neil do gets, I get flack for? Neil gets flack for hating all the Final Fantasies. Clinton can get flack for hating Endgame. <laughs> yeah, well Yeah, I won't say it. <laughs> also, I think with Pokemon it's kind of like a fifty fifty. Are they video game movies or are they anime movies? Video game I mean, movies. All, Detective Pikachu and Endgame, neither of which are video game movies. Detective Pikachu is 100% a video game movie. No, it's not. It's not based off any video game plot you've ever heard. There's no Pokemon orphan opal. Where well, then Final Fantasy Spirits Within isn't a video game movie. Why did you watch it? Because <laughs> Detective Pikachu is a video game. There is a video game called Detective Pikachu. Okay. <laughs> Does it follow the same story? No. But, <laughs> like, the first Pokemon movie is more about the anime than it is about the game. But it's all based on the game. I don't know. This is a whole different conversation. <laughs> We've gone way too long. End game is better than Detective Pikachu. End of podcast. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> I'm just kidding. End game is <laughs> awful. Yeah, well, that's your opinion, man. <laughs> Before we go, anything you got to say, Neil? Um, 
Someone send me like a good Final Fantasy anything. <laughs> Neil, we already have. We've just established you just don't like Final Fantasy. Okay. <laughs> I think that's it. Ten is pretty good. Seven is kind of like the one that's known to be really good. I guess you could play that one, but you're just gonna not like it the same. I just watch all the cutscenes. We, we should we work. should get Neil. We should get Neil an anime. That's a job for Clinton. Get Neil an anime that he likes. That'd be fun. I don't know what right. Neil likes in general. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. That's why I give the job to you. I'm not taking. Uh, Clinton, anything you have to say? Uh, cake is ska. Cake is ska. I it got is someone, ska. I got someone really mad about it on the internet today. Two people <laughs> <laughs> fell right into my trap. <laughs> they they go, well, if cake is ska, then Dave Matthews is ska because they have horns. And I said, well, Dave Matthews band doesn't wear those fishing hats. <laughs> 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 it was it was great. It was a good time. Uh, so go watch Detective Pikachu. It's great. Go watch Endgame. It's also great. If you think that Detective Pikachu is better than Endgame, <laughs> you're wrong, but that's all right. <laughs> that could be your opinion. It's just as valid as Cake is Scott. At the end of the day, we're all opinions, and everybody likes whatever they want, and if you like Final Fantasy, that's totally fine. At it's the end wrong. of the day, we're all Cake, and we're all Scott. Yep. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for listening. I will be back next week. Uh, and check out all the Party Fall game stuff on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, watch Duck Duck Dice or listen to it or watch it on YouTube. Uh, that's our other show that airs every Monday at 7 p.m. on Twitch. Or you can check it out uh, later on YouTube and podcast places. Thank you guys very much. I uh, hope you're all staying safe. And we'll talk to you soon.